Hello and welcome, Dr. Andy Rosenfarb here with AccuVision. We're going to talk a little bit more today about hydrogen therapy. What I wanted to dive in today is a conversation around these other specific health conditions that could benefit from hydrogen therapy. We talked a lot last week about eye conditions and uh, the different neurodegenerative conditions like glaucoma, macular degeneration, retinitis pigmentosa, eye strokes, optic nerve atrophy, cataracts, so on and so forth. All the eye conditions that can really benefit from elemental hydrogen therapy. Today, I want to talk about the other health conditions that can benefit because uh, we had a lot of inquiries about that. People were reaching out to us asking what else could uh, elemental hydrogen or hydrogen therapy do. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes and answer those questions. So let's dive into that. So research on elemental hydrogen therapy is still evolving. That means we're still finding out all the use, use value and all the benefits that hydrogen is producing for people, both empirically and research-based evidence. So several studies have suggested that there are potential benefits for various health conditions, of which we're going to look at right now. Some areas where hydrogen therapy has been investigated include the following. We're going to go through uh, a list of a few different types of conditions. So the first thing we're going to look at, of course, is oxidative stress-related conditions. So these are conditions that we know, like most of the ophthalmic conditions, that have a very, very uh, mm -hmm. dominant role of free radical reactive oxygen species and these types of uh, diseases that are that are brought on and accelerated and amplified by oxidative stress. So what conditions are these? Hydrogen therapy has shown to prom to has shown promise rather in reducing oxidative stress and inflammation in conditions like cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative disease, uh, brain disorders, eye diseases. These are usually oxidative stress that drive these conditions, brain, eye, and cardiovascular. So we're looking at brain conditions like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, dementia, uh, even things like uh, TBIs, traumatic brain injuries, concussion, um, heavy metal toxicity that can cause these conditions. Uh, we're looking at other eye conditions we talked about, strokes, diabetes, autoimmune conditions, right? Autoimmune creates a lot of oxidative stress. Uh, respiratory diseases like asthma, COPD, long COVID, very, very responsive to, to hydrogen therapy. Also things like liver disease and certain types of cancer can benefit. So a lot of these conditions like lymphoma are very oxidative driven conditions, especially the neurodegenerative conditions and the cardiovascular diseases. And again, if you guys know anything about uh, disease and what really drives death, um, again, it's kind of a morbid conversation, but it's important to have nonetheless. So, you know, barring getting in accidents, most people are going to pass from the following top three conditions, either a heart attack, uh, a stroke, cardiovascular related, cancer, or neurodegenerative disease. So it's either going to be a cardiovascular disease, stroke, you're going to have some type of cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, some type of uh, brain neurodegenerative condition or cancer. So here's the thing. Most of those conditions are driven by oxidative stress. Of course, there are other factors that cause them and, and influence them. But of these, uh, these top three causes of, of mortality, uh, oxidative stress plays a tremendous role. So let's, we're going to talk more specifically about some of those conditions. But let's talk next about the second area uh, or specific condition that uh, hydrogen therapy really excels at, and that would be sports performance and recovery. Um, I'll tell you my own story on this one, but but I've actually been I started using hydrogen uh, therapy for myself for this. So some studies are showing, and they're exploring the potential of hydrogen therapy in pr producing uh, accelerated recovery and enhancing athletic performance. So uh, things like fatigue, uh, muscle damage, recovery, sprains, strains. Uh, things like this. So uh, my personal experience with uh, with sports performance and recovery has been pretty pretty astonishing. So uh, side note, I do uh, jiu jitsu, Brazilian jiu jitsu, and I'm over fifty. <laughs> so as you guys can imagine, it's grappling, wrestling. It's very very um, it's very physically demanding workout. 
uh, where we do approximately 30 minutes of, of live wrestling. It's kind of like wrestling and grappling. Um, and I'm working out with guys in their teens, 20s, and 30s, which there's a couple of guys my age, but most of them are a lot younger. And after the workouts, especially the next day, there's a lot of muscle fatigue that, that I, I had experiences a, a lot. <laughs> so, um, which kind of limited my training because it was literally taking me, you know, two to three and sometimes four days to recover just from the, the, uh, the muscle inflammation and oxidative stress. So once I started about three, three, four months ago doing hydrogen therapy, both the inhalation and the, the water, uh, I had found that my, my recovery was pretty much a day or two. So I've noticed for myself, uh, my son wrestles, uh, in college. So, uh, we have a lot of, um, a lot of the coaches and athletes, uh, MMA fighters now and boxers starting to use this as well for athletic recovery. And, uh, it also is going to enhance their performance because it gives more energy, helps with focus while you're on the mat and energy, uh, but also the muscle recovery and also injuries. You get, you know, traumatic brain injury, a concussion, or there is, um, you know, a sprain, a strain, a break, a dislocation, something like that. Uh, even though you want to use conventional biomedicine to get in there with the repair, use things like physical therapy, uh, hydrogen therapy, and even things combining with hy uh, hyperbaric oxygen can dramatically accelerate recovery. So that's sports performance and recovery. The next thing we're going to talk about uh, in terms of area of benefit, of health benefit for hydrogen therapy, is the first area that I was uh, pointed to uh, which is dermatology and skincare. And I found out that in Japan, this was the first area where they had been using hydrogen therapy for uh, age, anti-aging and, and skin beautification therapy. So a uh, topical, ap topical application of hydrogen water or gas has been investigated for, uh, for improving uh, elasticity and wrinkles and blemishes and age spots and uh, little moles and you know all the weird things that happen after like 45, 50, especially if you've been in the sun a lot. So uh, various dermatological conditions, eczema, psoriasis, uh, chronic dry skin, winter dry skin, stuff like that. So um, there's this, this wound healing, acceleration for wound healing, uh, acne, um, inflammatory skin disorders, chronic or acute. Uh, and, and again, just skin aging, accelerated aging from sun damage or, you know, people smoke and drink and cigars and stuff like that sometimes, or it's genetics. So with there, there was a research study that showed that uh, individuals getting a hydrogen bubbler for their, for, you know, they're going into spas in, in Japan and they would do 10 minutes of a day. I believe it was 104 to 106 degrees Fahrenheit water and they'd submerge themselves in the water for about 10 minutes a day for six months, and they showed dramatic improvement. And not only the skin, uh, you know, skin quality, softness, lack of lines and wrinkles, the luster improved, but that's where they also saw other health benefits starting out because the pores dilate, and the hydrogen, again, is a giant detox organ, so the hydrogen gas was getting into the organs and into the body, even inside 10 minutes of uh, transdermal application. Transdermal, of course, meaning the gas will permeate through the open pores. Uh, open pores are dilated because you're in hot water and helping the lymphatic system and the skin's elasticity and the collagen for repair and regeneration. So really, really cool stuff there uh, in terms of skin health, health in terms of beautification, regeneration, also wound healing and chronic inflammatory conditions like eczema, psoriasis, um, you know, things like that. So the next area that we're going to talk about, again, is a little bit more ge general, but inflammatory conditions, all right? Inflammatory conditions, uh, we know that there is an anti-inflammatory effect that, uh, hor uh, uh, that hydrogen therapy can, can help with. So uh, chronic inflammatory conditions have, have a whole range of different conditions from like migraines and, uh, you know, neurological inflammatory conditions, tinnitus. Um, things like uh, irritable bowel and digestive issues, uh, arthritis, asthma, uh, IBS, Crohn's, colitis, uh, gastric ulcers. We're going to get into uh, digestive stuff in a minute. And uh, metabolic syndrome, PCOS, and, and even infertility uh, can be uh, dramatically benefited if there's an inflammatory component. And again, we talked, of course, about autoimmune and metabolic conditions. Um, preliminary research suggests that hydrogen, hydrogen therapy may help mitigate inflammation and alleviate inflammatory-related symptoms. So really, really interesting, fascinating on that. So there's a whole host of inflammatory-related conditions. 
Um, metabolic disorders is another area that, that hydrogen therapy can be really useful for. Uh, and hydrogen gas has been investigated for its potential to improve metabolic conditions like diabetes and obesity. Yes, I said it. Hydrogen therapy can be used for weight loss. Why? Because it helps release the uh, burden of, uh, of, of reactive oxygen species and free radicals would bind up your metabolism and actually cause a sluggish metabolism. So we're speeding up metabolic rate. We're helping regulate blood sugar. It helps assist with liver detox pathways, phase one, phase two detoxification. It helps clean out the lymphatic system, um, helps improve pancreatic function, which is going to help regulate insulin. So a lot of, of metabolic issues, uh, again, weight loss, thyroid issues for sure is going to help regulate that, uh, especially if it's either autoimmune or primary hypothyroid. So again, it has this real regulatory effect for metabolic issues. And some studies suggest that it may help regulate even glucose metabolism, as we talked about. Uh, again, enhancing this, this insulin resistance, insulin uh, sensitivity to reduce markers of metabolic syndrome or uh, syndrome X. So um, GI issues, we kind of touched on that a little bit earlier, but there's a lot of research coming out now that molecular hydrogen, especially drinking the water and the H2 tabs that we have now, the H2 vision that you can find on our website on iHealth Institute, uh, is showing that hydrogen therapy might be beneficial for gastrointestinal conditions like gastritis, right? Chronic gastritis, agita, uh, peptic ulcers, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, IBS, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, uh, conditions like this, spastic colon. Um, it may also help reduce inflammation in the gut and protect against overall damage from oxidative stress, which of course we know oxidative stress can for sure help uh, reduce oxidative nerve damage. Also, um, I just thought as I failed to mention when I was talking about neurodegenerative diseases, uh, multiple sclerosis. We've had a couple of patients already that have been using this for MS, which we know is an autoimmune neurodegenerative condition where the myelin sheaths degenerate, driven heavily by inflammation and oxidative stress. So the deal with these conditions that are autoimmune related, yes, we want to use things like vitamin D, look at food allergy testing and other therapies that are going to be pro-inflammatory, but there's no medicine that's really helping people with autoimmune conditions deal with this oxidative stress part of the puzzle, you know, this piece of the puzzle that is just not talked about. And that's why I'm spending so much time to help you guys. Um, again, because I know you guys are dealing with eye issues, but a lot of you guys have these comorbidities and even friends and family. Um, it's just such a great thing. Is it a cure-all? No, but it's going to help mitigate the symptoms, slow down the disease process. Okay. So now moving on to cardiovascular health. All right. A lot of studies showing now uh, the molecular hydrogen therapy on cardiovascular health. Again, we talked earlier about strokes and heart attacks being some of the leading causes of dis disease, death, and debilitation, right? So including hypertension, right? It can really help drop blood pressure. How and why? Because a lot of hypertension is driven by kidney uh, dysfunction, liver dysfunction. And when we drink hydrogen water, we know that that cleans out and helps the oxidative uh, stress load reduction on the kidneys in the liver and the vascular system, reducing things like renin in the kidneys and ammonia that accumulate that uh, cause dysregulation or a spike in the blood pressure. Also will help clean out the liver, which often liver congestion and liver detox pathways that aren't clean and, and functioning properly can result in hypertension. Also things like atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, ischemia, and uh, these types of injuries, stroke injuries, for sure. So accelerating the recovery. Hydrogen gas also shows potential reducing oxidative stress related to these conditions, inflammation, and overall vascular function, right? That's your blood vessels. So really, really important, guys. So don't underestimate taking your H2 tabs. Um, the last condition I want to talk about that we've is not really made it to the list, but this is clinical research that we've done over the last couple of months is I have a few patients who are undergoing chemotherapy, right? And radiation therapy for cancer, of course. So we know that chemotherapy and radiation is very, it's arguably some of the most extreme oxidation therapies out there, 
right? Chemotherapy is very, very oxidative. The idea is to try to kill the cancer cells in hopes that they're going to, you know, do some damage to your, your overall cells. But the idea there is that your body, the cancer cells are going to die and your body is going to recover, right? As much as possible. So we're kind of like nuking all the cancer cells and hoping the body can recover to the best of its ability. Now, in helping the body to recover after the bomb's been dropped, so to speak, on the body, either chemotherapy and we're radiating the body with radiation to kind of, you know, burn out or, or kill these cancer cells, we need a recovery process, right? And conventional medicine isn't so good at that. They don't have a full foolproof recovery process. So what happens when you go through radiation and chemo, you're left with all this oxidative stress. Like we need to get that job done to kill the cancer cells for sure. But afterwards, the free radical damage can sit there for days, weeks, months, years. We have all this free radical damage and that can get you sick again. You know, may, sometimes with cancer again, but also with other complications, right? Brain fog, neuropathies, nausea, uh, pains, you guys know, if you know anybody who's gone through chemo radiation, you know. So we've had patients in uh, going through the, um, the the hydrogen therapies, doing the water and both the uh, the nasal, the, the sinus inhalation through the nasal cannulas. And it, honestly, the, the results have been nothing short of miraculous. These people are coming in like on walkers, they can barely function. And uh, some even, you know, a while after this, these types of therapies. And we're really, really seeing tremendous results with uh, post, um, I, they're just beat up, you know, from chemo and radiation. So really, really helpful. Absolutely uh, something I didn't really, uh, uh, wasn't aware of that I could benefit for that. But again, the thinking here is understanding which diseases are driven by oxidative stress that conventional biomedicine is not having a conversation out. There's no real good treatment. And again, why, again, so there's antioxidants, there's, uh, you know, vitamin C, there's, there's uh, vitamin A, carotenoid antioxidants, uh, green tea, all the foods that have these di different antioxidants uh, or different forms, glutathione, NAC, right? We've talked about all these, but the problem is sometimes there's vascular dysregulation where these, these nutrients, these vital antioxidants just can't get to those parts of the body. Maybe they can't cross the blood brain barrier. Maybe they can't cross the blood retinal barrier. Maybe there's vascular damage. Maybe there's cholesterol issues or blood clots or ischemia or just poor circulatory issues where these these uh, antioxidant nutrients can't get to that part of the body. So what we do is we use elemental hydrogen because of its nature of being so small and so so easy pen easy to penetrate to all areas of the body, and it just basically turns these free radicals into water. So um, I want to stop there. Uh, that is what I want to talk about. Uh, I want to kind of wrap this up on the uh, these other. Uh, health conditions and other health benefits that you may see as a result of, of using hydrogen therapy. So what, what I want you guys to do, again, uh, if, if you're willing to, and if those of you guys in our uh, Facebook group, is let us know, you know, if you're using hydrogen uh, tabs or, or you've been using it at all, especially the tabs in the water, let us know what you found. Again, this is why we're doing our clinical research. We want to find, we don't know all the conditions that could benefit. Again, like we we're just talking about uh, chemo and radiation. That wasn't even something I thought about. But the more we hear from you guys and the benefits that you're seeing from using hydrogen therapy and using the H2 tabs and let us know uh, what effect it's having on your body and what positive benefits you guys are seeing. So we really appreciate your guys' input and feedback on that. And it's really helpful not only for us, but for everybody else. Um, because look, people are struggling with a bunch of health conditions. So I'll end on that note. Again, I am Dr. Andy Rosenfarb with AccuVision, where your vision is our mission. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.